Hello everybody, I'm Raphael Perry and it's time once again for some more of Steve Jackson's Sorcery. Now last episode I divvered, I dallied, I tarried, I wasted time. I had purchased a large amount of food and I had no desire to lose it all in the lake. Speaking of which, what is my current plan? I would like to not lose all the food I bought in the water of the lake. Some of it's wrapped, so that may protect it. Also, I'd like to encounter the water serpent and the time serpent. Obviously, that should be fairly easy to do, right? I just divert all the beacons away from the lake, swim out into the lake, meet the water serpent, remember to cast the SSS spell, release the sun serpent, let the two destroy one another, maybe I'll even get a chance to cast the SSS spell on the sun serpent as well, unlikely, but possible. I might not even get to release it. Then... Go to the island in the middle of the lake and find out how to defeat the Time Serpent. I suspect I've got all the pieces of information but haven't quite put something together yet. What else would I like to do? I'd like to go to here and turn on this beacon. It should be... Ah, is it this one? If I turn this one... Crossing the paths of the beacon... Cancels out and negates and like a double negative, right? Um, I could shine this one over here to, to get this bit of water, but that would mess with the water around it, wouldn't it? In theory, I can visit this island, this island. Ooh, that, that parting there is tricky. And this one. So I can go down here and get a boat. Do I need to adjust the beam ever so slightly? So the answer is a no. Hang on, how about if I get it here? No, no, no. I need I need to be able to try and get a boat from here. I need to be able to get to this island here without losing the house on it. I think this is it. Which is probably exactly back where I left it. Well then, I shall rest here overnight. I have rations. Um, I won't drink a blimberry potion. I won't eat something. Rocks, I'm in the tower. You close your eyes and let your tiredness overtake you. You feel untouched by danger here and your slumber is untroubled by dreams. So, in theory... It should be pretty straightforward to finish this book. In practice, I want to explore the past aspects of the of the lake and the islands. I want to try and do that in a boat with the food that I bought. You entered the steps, entered the Vishlami Marsh, explored the city of Timpang, and you have still got the sun serpents. You have now destroyed five of the archmage serpents. Well, defeated. Let's go back down. You wake after a peaceful night and gather up your pack once more. Down I go. You return down the tower steps. You leave the tower base. The sky is blue and pink. You walk amongst the uneven stones until you join flatter ground, an old road. A few clouds furl and unfurl in the sky. Time to move onwards. So, something I want to comment on as I come here. We've had lots of little girls. We've had the ghost of little girl who used to be here. We've had the girls in Krista... 
no, not Christotanti, that's book one, isn't it? Uh, Kariyama, with their missing dog. And the girl here on the road who may have been the same one from this town or might not. The road curves gently as you follow it. The, wind, the rising winds tug at your hair and cloak. The road is busy as before. You stride on. You continue following the road. The sun is hot now. You march forwards. And on I go. You follow the road downhill to the lake shore. The shore teems of activity. Heat beats down from a cloudless sky. I don't want to wait for nightfall. I want to see if I can hire a boat. I don't want to steal a boat. I've had plenty of opportunities for naughty theft-like things, and that's not necessarily the way I should proceed. Oh, 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 oh! Oh! Maybe this is it. Maybe this is how I lure the water serpent out of hiding. But... No, 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 because this is... Okay, so this is very odd, right? Um, I'm in the wrong time. So in the past time, when I'm safe from the serpents, I can throw it in the water. In the future time, when I'm not safe from the serpents, I don't believe I had an option to throw it in the water. This feels like a trap. Huh. You walk down to the shoreline. The water looks clean and inviting, though it is almost certainly freezing cold. In the far distance, boats punt this way and that between scattered islands. What whistle? There is no whistle here. I have no whistle. Why is this option available? There's no whistle. A whistle? Where did I get this? A simple brass whistle. You know what? In that case, I'll blow it, but I should probably do that in the future time rather than the past time. But sure. You take out the whistle and blow it, but nothing happens. Presumably there is no ferryman here. At least not in this time. Not in this time, as I suspected. I'll call out for a boat. You call out for a boat, but they are well out of earshot. A few nearby people look at you strangely. I'm not going to swim. I'm not going to throw the sun serpent orb into the water and terrify and traumatize these poor fishermen by unleashing a massive monster upon them. I'll step away from the water. You turn back to the waterline. To wa you turn back from the waterline towards the bustling waterfront area. The afternoon is starting to draw on. Well. Hmm. Wait for night and steal a boat? That's not what I want to do. Um, hmm. So I'm not wanting to... Oh, this is mildly annoying, isn't it? Right. Okay, okay, that's a problem. But definitely needs... Oh, bugger. So, if I walk all the way back up here once again, jump over here... No, see, that's working now. Um, visit the market stalls. You return to the stalls to browse further. Nope, elsewhere... You move away from the stalls. The sun is beginning to lower and the air begins to cool. No option to... You turn away from the lake shore and follow the paved road back along the river bank. Well. 
Hmm. Okay. Okay. Let Let's just be really simple. Yeah. You leave for shore for an old road across the plains. The sun is sinking. Soon it will be dark. The cool wind blows between the cracked flagstones. You continue to walk. So, why? I need to work out the trail of the time serpent again. It goes, it goes from here, round here, round here. And then as it comes up here, I think it might go like that. So maybe I can put all the beacons away from the lake, find a ferryman, visit all these islands, get to this hut in the correct time zone if the time serpent's path reveals it. Dangerous and time consuming, I know, but let's do it. So. The road curves gently as you follow it. Clouds begin to tumble across the dimming sky. The road is busy as before. You stride on. Well, so, this is a bad plan. It's a terrible plan. You follow the old road. Another night begins. You need to rest, especially after travelling all day without food. Time to move onwards. Now. The streets are as quiet as the grave. The moon rises, filling the world with thin silver light. To the tower! And once within the tower, I will go up to the very tip-top of the tower. I will adjust the beam. If I turn it right, so hang on. I think that's a yes. So if I shine the beacon once more upon the townstead, there. Touch the crystal. I'm resetting everything back to the way it should be. This is also probably a disaster. And because I'm doing something fairly simple, I'm not going to... Okay, okay. Yes, it does. Okay, great. So we'll just put this one back on the bridge like that. Touch for crystal. And now... We're going down here. Adjust the beam. And there we get our swamp. Then we'll look at the map. And the hut is here. Water serpent is here. As long as I don't go through... Right, right, right. So, hmm. Ferryman I could arguably get to take me to all of these islands. Arguably. Once more, with leaping, it's like feeling, but there's a jump involved. And we are back here and ready to rest. I have food. I will absolutely eat something. Cooked fish. Not, not the, the cooked fish wrapped in protective cloth, not the apples, which... Okay, fine. <laughs> So then, 
Let's go back down the tower. Head out through the town. With a minimum of fuss. Uh, look at the pillars again. Oh! The pillars you saw earlier have built themselves up into an arch which spans the road, casting a deep shadow as you walk through. Carved into the lintel stones in the old hand are two pictograms. The first symbol is for metal. The second is for pain. This, it proclaims, is the city of Tin Pang. A city of miners. Indeed. The road curves gently as you follow it. As the morning moves on, the wind begins to rise. You stride on. I have been informed of a few things here, right? You continue to walk along the road. It is very warm. You begin to sweat under your pack. Restless dust moves across the surface of the road. You continue on your journey. So. What do I know here? I know the water serpent is in the water. I have been told the water serpent is waiting for me to tire myself out trying to swim across the water before it will make its attack. And it is unlikely to attack while I'm in a boat. There is probably a ferryman. I have the whistle. So I could use the ferry to row back and forth across the lake to visit the various islands, eating my food as I do so, and then go and face the water serpent when I'm ready, right? You follow the road as it bends and then descends to the shores of the lake. Looking out across the vast expanse of still water which stretches to the horizon, you resolve, your resolve grows. How can you cross? There are no signs of either people or boats. The far shore is nothing but a blur against the sky. And now that I understand why this whistle option is available, I'm absolutely going to blow the whistle. You put the whistle to your lips and give it a short, shrill blow. The sharp note disappears over the still water. I have no option to cast the Sun Serpent Orb into the water. It is... I don't want to do it in the past, because that will be wrong, because the Water Serpent won't be there yet. But it will be in the water. Is the Water Serpent the Sun Serpent's weakness, or is the water its weakness? Uh, yeah, 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 each has a weakness, fine. Only vulnerable to water. So yeah, dropping it in the water when the water serpent isn't about could be good. Also, I don't have any oil, do I? I do have a flask of oil. Great! So perhaps dealing with it in the past, but I don't think so. Right, so I've blown the whistle. I will wait. For an hour, you wait. The afternoon is drawing on, but apart from the occasional small animal darting around the waterline, the area seems to be completely deserted. In the distance over the water, a few bird-like creatures turn in the sky. I shall continue waiting. Perhaps this is not the place to wait for a boatman. Perhaps I should go upshore or downshore. Um, but I should stay in the place where I blew the whistle. Half an hour later, there are still no signs of intelligent life along the lake shore. You begin to realize it is likely that you will wait for a very long time for the means to cross Lake Ilklala. It must be possible to cross the lake, but you may have to swim. I'll walk along the shoreline. Can I blow the whistle here? For several strides, you follow the shoreline eastwards, but find nothing of note. The shoreline ends in a collapsed seawall. So, here? Thin clouds drift over the open sky above the lake. I'll gather some sand. You gather a handful of sand. And I'll walk the other way. You walk back and try the other way. 
again, you come across nothing that might help you get across. I don't want to swim. What am I going to lose if I start swimming? Raw meat, maybe. Cooked fish, maybe. Apples, perhaps. Beeswax in the water. How is it contained? Have I... I cloth skull cap I don't think it'll be completely ruined by the water sand nose plugs pebbles blimbery juice I should probably cast dock on those and then just carry them around as like super healing potions bamboo flute three goblins teeth black face mask green haired wig bracelet bone crystal orb two bottles of holy water ring of green metal just the gale horn yellow powder stone dust Jewel, two jewels of gold. Oh, a snake belly key. I should maybe look for the thing that unlocks. I suspect it's somewhere down around the ruined temple or something. Hmm. The sun serpent orb, a whistle, flask of oil, goblin message. Now, I can't read the goblin parchment. And I've apparently memorized the message. If I... Mm, a set of dice, compass, potion of mystery. Uh, this, this feels wrong. There's something not right here. It's very much pushing me towards swimming. No boat. Huh. So... What can I do? Mm. Do I have to reset everything? Because if so, that's a terrible waste. Fine. Let's experiment. I'll go all the way back to Tin Pang. Is if I drop the Sun Serpent in the water, that should be its destruction. I'd like to do it with the Water Serpent nearby, but they're in different time zones. I need to get them to interact. If I'm swimming, I might not be able to get the orb out and present it. How do I lure the water serpent out of hiding? Hmm. I think I have to swim. At least it's all in the same timeline, and I can theoretically come back here and buy more rum. Sure, I'll 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 sod it. Ugh. The lake is wider than the eye can see. To swim across it might take an entire day. You cannot be sure. There are islands, and we lost full food. You step down to the water's edge, do what you can to secure your pack, and then dive in. At least the water is warm. Once again, your fragile possessions are ruined, including the goblin's precious parchment. Your spellbook is getting soggy, but remains otherwise intact, but all of your soft food has been ruined. How about other items? What appears to be missing, I'm not sure. Right, so. Let's swim. You fall into a steady stroke through the water. After so long walking, it is almost a pleasant change to swim. The sun begins to dip, heading towards the horizon. The water is strangely thick and curiously buoyant. It seems to keep you afloat with little effort required, but the same buoyancy makes moving through the water hard work. 
Come on, serpent. How much swimming do we need to do to get your attention? It's, it's a lot, isn't it? You swim on through the water. It is for exhausting work. The sun lowers towards the horizon. It will be night soon. A shoal of brightly coloured fish pass by just under the surface. One nips at your fingers with tiny teeth. I'll splash them away. You splash at the water. The shoal turns about in a flash and is gone. You swim quickly away before they can return. On the lake, middle of the lake, near the island. Right, I want to visit the islands. I imagine this one is approached from this side. I do want need to get the attention of the water serpent. You try to sustain a regular stroke as you swim. Night falls. You should find somewhere safe to sleep, especially after so long swimming with an empty belly. You pause for a moment, treading water and catching your breath. The size of the lake is beginning to dawn on you. Just keep swimming. But thinking about it can do no good. You set your mind to swimming. Swimming like this is hard work. The first few stars appear. You pause for a moment. Several yards ahead, the water is bubbling upwards. Cautiously, you splash towards the frothing water. Closer in, you start to notice that as each bubble breaks on the surface, there is a sickly smell. You hold your breath and put your face in the water to peer through the murk. Somewhere far below, something shadowy is moving slowly by. The bubbles rise from a hole in its back. Then the shadow passes and is gone. I'll wait a little longer. You wait a little longer, but nothing changes. Don't need to thrash around and get its attention. It seems whatever was here truly has moved on. You swim onwards across the surface of the lake. It is hard going and horribly cold. The moon sets. More stars appear. You rest, lifting your face from the water. Everything around you is wonderfully calm and still. For a moment you can believe you are the only living thing in the world. You have swum within reach of the bay of a low island. You will need to go ashore and recover. Absolutely! Just what I was thinking. You haul yourself gradually up onto the shoreline. More stars come out. Maybe I can cook food in the hut. There is no way across the water in the dark, and exploring inland would be unwise. You're lying. <laughs> you will have to rest here. Setting down, you pack on, setting down your pack on the shore of the lake, you try to settle despite the shivering cold of your still wet clothing. You have eaten nothing today. Well, I'll eat something. Pulling out one of your grilled fish from your bag, you eat your first meal of the day. Then you stretch out and rest. The night is kept busy with visions. You are swimming through icy, endless water, with every f but every stroke is only stretching the water beneath you, making it longer. Meanwhile, the cold is moving up your veins. A powerful wind ranges about you, screaming insults and anger with its violent voice. The air pulls at your eyes, your hair, your boots and your sword, hoping to spread you apart. And all the while, you hear distant laughter from the east. <laughs> You have used many provisions, lost rather, we still have the sun serpents, you have now defeated five of the serpents of Mampang. The sun rises above the waters of the lake. This island is thickly wooded, but all the trees have died and the whole forest is grey and desolate. In the shallows stands a tall pole from which hangs a bell. I'll look at the bell. The bell is set with a silver clapper attached to a rope. The wind shifts a moment, bringing with it a terrible stench. Then the smell is gone. I will not ring the bell. I'll not rest. I'll explore inland. Maybe this is a good place to throw the, the sun serpent into the water. You move away from the shore and into the tree cover of the island. Now, there's a house and I want to see it. You head away from the shoreline into the trees. 
you walk up the path from the shore into a small clearing in a dead forest. At the centre is something that used to be a hut, but now is just three rickety walls and part of a roof. And this is in the past now. I will look inside. Inside, an old woman is hunched over a table scattered with vials, broken jars and plants you don't recognise. She's mixing some kind of bright green paste and is so absorbed in her work she don't notice you. I will approach. No, I'll stay back and watch. I might learn something. The woman mutters to herself as she steadily grinds the mixture. Her white hair is in one wild clump that reaches her waist. She's wearing a filthy brown robe that might actually be a sack. She looks up from her work to pour around the table, eventually grabbing some berries and tossing them in. Half of the ingredients in her run-down hut you cannot name, but she appears to know what she is doing. She must be a healer, or otherwise a witch. Greetings, wise woman. My apologies for the intrusion. She squints at you, sucking on her few teeth with a wet pop. Eh? What? Who are you? I am on a quest. Quest? A quest? Ha! She replies. Quests are no good. Leaving home will get you killed, you know. I only ever leave my island for ingredients. Oh, ingredients? I think we might be able to trade here, you ask. For my potions, she says, waving over her shoulder at a shelf groaning with concoctions and jars. These islands are brimming with herbs and dirt clumps I've never seen before. They probably all have a hundred uses. After so long in this cruel wilds, this woman makes for unpleasant, unexpectedly pleasant company. What is your name? She screws up her face. You know, that's an excellent question. Uh, very well, um... What do your potions do? I can never be sure, she replies with a shrug. I experiment. I push the boundaries of the healing arts. I've created several new recipes that you won't find anywhere else. Oh, that sounds really most interesting. Most indeed, she agrees fervently. You see, I've studied at the fortress, no less. They were so impressed with me, they suggested some independent study. They told you to bugger off. So that's what I've been doing. Alone for, oh, 47 years, she cocks her head. But aren't you curious? Here, let me try something on you. A pick-me-up strong enough to get you through the lake, even up the mountains. What do you say? What's inside it? You ask suspiciously. She waves a bowl of green substance around excitedly. It's a very powerful healing potion, she says. You won't find this in some market. Oh no, I'm doing experiments that are so experimental, even I don't know what I've put in. But there's some Oscap, flattened goblin hair, and a bit of unicorn meat, uh, but that's mostly for flavour. Goblin hair? Uh, what? No, no, I never said that. Why would I put goblin hair in a healing potion? Oh, that's definitely what you said. Goblin hair would be wrong, she says. It's a cure for baldness. Now, I distinctly remember telling you that the potion has oscap, catfish whiskers, and levitated sand for the colour, so drink. So you use all sorts of ingredients. I think I'm not going to risk it. You remark, stalling for time. Oh, yes, she says. Anything I can get my hands on. You never know what effects they may have. Others might be content with knowing what a potion will do in advance, but how are we supposed to advance like that? Um, perhaps I have something you could use in, in a potion. She shrugs and you open your pack. She claws through it like a rat. Not much in here. Hmm. You need to pick things up more often. I pick up everything I see. Uh, maybe these purple leaves would be useful. You say, pointing to a pile on the workbench. She smacks her head. You know, I completely forgot to add those. 
or did I forget to not add them? I distinctly recall one of these two being important. Uh, before you get a chance to say anything, she tosses a few into the mixture. Better safe than sorry, that's the herbalist creed. She wipes her hands on the already filthy sack she's wearing. Now that we sorted that out, how about a taste? She holds the concoction inches away from your face. It smells vile. Um... I've, I, no, I, 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 don't, I don't think I should risk it. Um, she's She's been sent away from the Archmage's School of Sorcery. And they haven't invited her back and she hasn't thought it. No, 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 just... You try to be polite. The witch grows agitated. Everyone who comes to my hut needs to taste a mixture. That's the rule. Otherwise, I wouldn't get any work done. Do you want to go back? Do you want to hold back my work? The advancement of the medi... Me medicigical? She holds the green paste to your face. It smells rancid. Um... Ooh, very tempting to throw it in her face and see what happens. Uh... No, look, I, I think I'll just walk towards the door. And then... You turn to leave, but she grabs your arm in a painful vice grip. For a starved hermit, she possesses incredible strength. Now, now, she shrieks, I'm a reasonable woman. Everyone who comes in tests a recipe. That's the rule, especially for vagrants like you. No appreciation of the magical arts or how hard I work. Still holding onto your arm, she waves for paste in front of your face. Just one test, then you can leave. Um, this really feels like I'm being forced in one direction, but I do not want to go. I should have probably neither come here. You pull at your arm and are surprised at how quickly the healer responds, throwing you to the ground. We were told the Archmage can take several forms. There's no time to draw your sword or even throw a punch. You pull at her, your arm and are surprised how... I thought you understood, she remarks as she straddles your chest, holding your nose and begins to pour the thick green substance into your mouth. I've developed some potions that give great power. The liquid is caught in the back of your mouth. You can feel it trying to worm its way into your throat. Oh, throw her off. That'll probably involve... Gathering your strength, you manage to throw her sideways. A moment later, you are sitting on her. You spit out the potion in your mouth. She's frozen in surprise. The potion bottle's still in her hand. Oh, she is going to drink that potion. You decide to turn the tables. Look, she tried to force it on me. Let's see how she likes the taste of her own medicine. She coughs and splutters at first, but eventually begins smacking her lips. Oh, that's delicious, she cries. I don't see what the fuss was about, and I feel great, youthful even. Are all my potions this good? She squirms out from under you and runs up to her shelf, sampling potions at random. With every swig, she compliments her own potion-mixing ability. She seems to have completely forgotten about you. Yeah, time to bugger off. I'm not going to steal something. I'm not going to drink a random potion. I don't know what it'll do. I'm going. You leave the hut, rather hoping you will not encounter the healer again. It is possible her potion would have been highly beneficial. Whoa, what's gone on here? The, 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 the time is all wrong. There's no, no water serpent. Do I need to walk back down here to get to it again? You return to the shore of the lake. The pole with the bell marks the edge of the water. Water serpent, where are you? Does it move? Does it literally move? The water serpent should be here. Why is it gone? What on earth is happening? Oh, bugger. Well, 
I've screwed up everything this session so far, so might as well do it for even further. You toss the herb, the orb, into the water, and it sinks rapidly out of sight, its light fading from view. Keep watching. You keep watching, not quite believing it could be so simple, and your suspicion is well founded. From under the water, a powerful glow suddenly erupts as though the sun had risen beneath the surface. Then that sun rises, eventually leaping from the steaming, hissing water in the form of a serpent. Weakened, but not defeated. And then I cast the SSS spell, right? But really, I wanted to do this with the water serpent here. You spread your arms to cast a spell, but you're not fast enough. The serpent's... Okay, so that's messed up. That's really bad. Obviously, should not have done that. I think I'll stick to my original. So, look inside. Stay back and watch. Yeah, this does give me an option to drink her potion on a quest. She's not that interested. Ingredients. Uh, she doesn't know her own name at this point. So she's pretty senile. I could ask if she sells her potions, but if she doesn't know what they do, that's not much point. Uh, it does sound interesting. Ask her what's in it. She changes her mind. So if I drink it... The potion slides down your throat. Your legs begin twitching and wobbling violently. Every step is a frenzy of bending knees and feet moving in random directions. You spend a few minutes in the nearby forest, bashing into trees and kicking underbrush before you can gain control of your legs again. Yeah, so that was a crap potion. So, what even was the point of coming here? So if the Sun Serpent is too fast for the Triple S spell... Eat food. Rest. Look at the bell. Ring the bell. You pull the bell rope, but nothing happens. Looking up, you see the clapper of the bell has been lost. How unfortunate. Throw something at the bell. Coin, a pebble. Nah. Nah. I, I don't see a great advantage to ringing the bell. Explore inland. We get to the hut. We look inside the hut. Stay back and watch. I think we should... Okay, so we don't get to leave. Okay, uh, on a quest. We'll force feed her the potion and she's going to love it. Right. What do you do here? Da -da -da -da. Completely mental lady. Doesn't even know her old name. Um, do you sell these potions? You ask, gesturing towards the rack. No one ever comes to buy them, she says, but maybe you could. I'm always happy to let someone else test, uh, <coughs> try a new potion of mine. Helps iron out the kinks. Sounds risky. And then she's going to try and feed me the potion. Yes. So, do not drink the potion. Ask about ingredients to distract. Um, ask about them. If I ask about the beetles, she might put those in. It would be a different potion, right? Refuse. There's probably a very beneficial potion I can get out of this. Um, try to leave. Cast her off and give her the potion. Right, return to the shore. Time to start swimming. 
Oh, water serpent, where art thou? I'll jump into the water. You steal your courage against the long swim and plunge into the water. You keep a steady pace as you make your way through the water. A few clouds tumble across the sky. A dark shadow passes over water. Oh, it's the, um... It's the, it's the birdman carrying something that might be a minotaur. To, goes to the eastern island and then flies off leaving the thing there. Water serpent, wherefore art thou? I need to avoid entering into the past time. Swimming is also, like this is very tiring. The sun is hot now. You stop briefly, holding up your head and catching your breath. Looking up, you sense a suitable formation of stars above you. Then I will cast a spell. Oh, Zen? Would make sense. Blatant Zen. Uh, nip is the speed. Big. I'll just go Zen then. It won't last forever. You cast the enchantment and the medallion begins to glow as you rise gently up into the air. Out of the waves you can rest a little as well as move yourself much more quickly around. I need to get to wherever the water serpent is. You float on across the surface of the lake. Your weight returns and you settle gradually back down to the water. The sun has reached its highest point now. Out of the shade, the air is baking hot. I don't think the big thing swimming underneath me was the water serpent. You swallow on, you swim on through the water. It is tiring work. Slowly the sun begins to make its way back down the sky. You pause for a moment, wiping your eyes. Splashing, you accidentally swallow a mouthful of lake water and feel yourself beginning to gag. Is it the water serpent trying to get into my throat and drown me? Spit it out. You spit it out and a thick leech the size of your thumb goes flying into the water as well. In that case, I definitely swim away and hope it doesn't attach itself to me. You splash and swim frantically away from the leech before it can find its way to you. You have swum in sight of a small island. You cannot keep swimming without a break. Well then. You splash through the shallows to the shore. The sun begins to dip, heading towards the horizon. The island is rocky and barren. In the centre is a rise of land from which a tree grows. But one thing is certain. This is the island which you saw the birdman visit. By the shoreline is another pole with a bell. Maybe casting it into the chasm would give me... It wouldn't weaken it, but it would give me better reaction time to, to cast a spell. I don't know. Let's be stupid and see how this goes. Uh, keep watching. Comes up. Cast a spell. And it's too fast. Okay, so yes. Do not throw it into the water. Understood. There's another bell. Definitely set up for a ferryman. I'll explore inland. You leave the shoreline and head inland. You circle the shoreline of the island to the north as you climb your way up the rising stones. The surfaces are slippery with thick moss and vegetation. Suddenly, your easy pace, pace is interrupted by a cry from somewhere inland. Oh! Could it be Flanker? I'll listen. You stop to listen. It is a human voice. You make out two words. Stay away! I'll keep listening. You make no more movements, not wanting to give away your presence. Stay away! The voice cries. Analander, stay back! Don't come close. 
You hesitate on the rocks. Surely this is a trap. But let's be brave. The voices whimpering and dire cries continue. You climb further around the island, a little higher at every step, until you reach the island's peak. But as you approach, you realise it, it is the lip of some kind of pit. Ah, uh, cast a spell. Almost a brilliant idea. Yes, yes, sod it. The water serpent wants me to be tired and exhausted. No how. Walk. Tell, yeah, sure. Drawing the skull cap from your pack, you cast the spell. Reaching out of your mind, you detect the faintest sense of a nearby creature. The voice is not an illusion nor a mimicking creature, but a true human intelligence. But it is very faint now and must be close to the point of sleep or of death. I'll reassure the creature. You reach out of your mind to reassure the creature, but the presence of your thoughts seems only to make its pleas more panic-stricken. Stay away, it calls. Please stay back. I will climb to the edge of the pit, but draw my sword. You draw your sword in readiness, not knowing what to expect, and then... Blade held ready, you clamber upwards. The voice does not stop at constant warning. Between sobs it calls out, Annalanda, stay back. Come no closer, please stay away. And yet, closer I shall come. However, that, I believe, will have to wait till the very next episode. I hope you've all been enjoying this one, and I'll look forward to seeing you all in the next one. I'm going to say goodbye for now, though. Cheerio, everyone.